Hey y'all. So you know that we got this new loaner milk cow and um, she's been doing great. And last night we milked and we got about three quarts plus less than enough for the calf for the night. So we're really excited. It seems like she's going to work out great and we're really going to get um, a good bit of milk out of her. Enough for us to at least uh, have a steady supply in the fridge to drink. But um, her udder is getting a little bit chapped and I like to make this homemade udder bomb. I started making it back in, I'm going to say 2014. Um, when we had our first milk cow and um, I got the original recipe from the Prairie Homestead um, but I have tweaked it over the years to meet our needs and I've used it on the cows and the goats and it works perfect. Um, a really good friend of mine is very experienced with milk cows and has um, multiple cows and she swears by this for uh, after calving edema when there's the swelling in the udder and all that she uses it and it takes it down she said it she would guess that it reduces the swelling by like 80 percent within 24 hours uh don't quote me on that <laughs> but that's just in her experience what she's found and we found that it works really well too um it's just really simple and easy to make it easy ingredients i have here one of my hair is stuck in the shea butter label just organic shea butter i buy this on amazon um, and I use it for a lot of stuff, um, but I like to keep it on hand to make salves and things like that, but it always goes in my udder bomb. And then um, coconut oil, I sometimes buy coconut oil in a five gallon bucket from, you know, Tropical Traditions or World of Family Naturals or uh, just something like that. But lately, because it's convenient, I just get it in this tub at Walmart and I don't have to have somewhere to store a big five gallon bucket. This fits in the cabinet and I use this for lots and lots of stuff. I use it for my hair and my face and you know everything basically because you know coconut oil is like the wonder of the world um and then beeswax and um i've seen it on amazon as you can see mine is actually well it's not focusing very well on it there you go um i got beeswax like five years ago there you go <laughs> Um, we, there was a local beekeeper and he had a bunch of wax from just the caps over the years that he'd been, um, just saving the wax and he hadn't purified it or cleaned it or anything. He just had it and wasn't using it for anything. And, uh, we had asked somebody we knew if they knew of anywhere we could get some beeswax and they knew him and connected us. And so we got a ton of beeswax and I've, uh, just been using it for these types of projects. Made a few candles with it one time. It was really fun, but it's been really nice to have this supply. But if you don't have beeswax, uh, from a local beekeeper you can order that on Amazon as well and it comes in these little um, pellets and they they melt a lot faster the smaller you can get the pieces the better I had these in chunks so I've been kind of breaking it up because it will take it a little while to melt um, so I've got my ingredients here and then this is kind of a mix of oils the recipe is on the blog and I'll link it in the description but what it calls for is three ounces of olive oil I've used avocado oil or olive oil this is actually an infused calendula. Well, that's how you, I think it's pronounced the herb. It's an herbal flower. Um, I looked it up on Google and Google told me it was pronounced calendula. But I know there's always debate on that amongst herbalists. And some people say calendula, calendula, calendula. But anyway, whatever. It's herbal oil. It was infused in, um, I believe, avocado oil. It was either olive oil or avocado. Either one it's, works. But I didn't have quite enough of that left. I had about two and a half ounces. So then I added some more olive oil to it. And I was running out of that too. <laughs> I didn't prepare for this because this is kind of like, oh, the cow needs this. So I'm going to make it now. And then I was just shy. So I added a little bit extra coconut oil. That's what the floating stuff is. So um, as far as your oils go, you can play around with it. It doesn't have to be an exact. But you want a three ounces of a mostly liquid oil. And then I have one ounce each of shea butter and solid coconut oil and I like to do the virgin coconut oil that's unrefined when I'm making um, products like this for the body and then I have um, I have to look at my recipe how much wax was this it's one ounce that's right it's one ounce of beeswax you would think I would remember by now but I don't always so I like to start with a double boiler and I just have a stainless steel bowl in this pot and I put my liquid oil in first and then I put in my coconut oil and shea butter and I stir and it will take the shea butter a little while to, to melt um, I don't have the heat I have it over about a medium heat because you don't want to cook your oils because when you the more you heat them the less of the medicinal healing properties they have you know it's cooked out so I just keep it low and I stir it low and slow and what I'll do is I'll wait for this all to melt 
completely and dissolve and then I'll add the beeswax and stir it until it dissolves um, and then at the end of that I'll show you as I go through I'm going to um, at the very end I'm going to pull it from the heat and I'm going to add some specific essential oils um, and mix that in really good and then I'm going to actually use this jar uh, and I'm going to pour it into this jar and I usually stick it in the freezer for like five minutes just to help it set and not separate or anything like that um, it seems to work for me I'm not an expert on this or anything it's just you know it's like with anything in the in life or in home setting in general you just kind of find something that you think is going to work for you and you try it and then you tweak it as you go to make it completely work for you so that's what um you know no two homesteads are like no two families are like so sometimes um, what works for one person a specific way doesn't exactly work for another person so you just have to go with it and tweak it and be adaptable with it so this is melting down you can see it's actually going pretty quickly I was thinking it would take a little longer but um, I'm going to start adding beeswax. And another thing I want to say, you can measure your um, your ingredients by volume if you want. Like you can put them in a measuring cup or kind of guess at them. It's not an exact science. I typically use a kitchen scale um, just because I like to know that I'm getting about the right amount of ingredients. So this time I actually measured out to the exact amount. There have definitely been plenty of times where I haven't measured and I'm just throwing the ingredients together. Um, when you do that, it works. The only thing you're going to have is probably a consistency difference. Um, and you may find that you want your consistency to be thinner or thicker or harder. Uh, it just depends on what you want out of it. Uh, this stuff is great for hands too. So if you're out there, you know, even if you don't have a cow or a goat and you're just outside a lot in the wintertime, your hands tend to get dry. This stuff is really great for that. It's a nice hand balm. Um, another thing is in the summertime or warmer months, we would leave the jar in the barn with the lid on it. Just leave it out there. Uh, but in the wintertime, you don't really want to do that because it's going to get really cold. Besides the fact that it gets below freezing, it's going to freeze in general. But because it does have these oils in it, um, it's going to get really hard and you won't be able to get it, get it out of the jar very well. So I'm going to go ahead and put these... Oops, my wax is sticking a little because my jar is warm over here where I'm cooking. There we go. I dropped a piece. So I'm just going to let this wax melt. And like I said, when it's done, I'm going to put the essential oils on it. And I use, um, I like to use frank frankincense oil in most of my products. Like I use it in deodorant and usually if I make a healing salve, um, I use it because it just has a lot of really good healing properties. It's good for, you know, cell renewal and things like that. Um, I hear a crying baby. I'll be right back. Okay. She just wants to be out here with me. And I have all the kids in the room so I can make this video and kind of have a little bit of quiet while I do it. Um, but anyway, I, so I use frankincense, and then for this, I like to use the um, Melaleuca or tea tree oil um, because it has a lot of antiviral, antimicrobial type properties to it, and it also help with the swelling. Um, and then I use a uh, protective blend. It's just another one that helps keep any of the germs down and all of that. Um, and I've also used helichrysum and lavender in this before. I am out of both of those, so, well, I have helichrysum somewhere, but it disappeared, and have yet to find it. <laughs> but um, those are really great for it. And then also, if you're dealing with edema and a lot of swelling, peppermint oil would be good. I, I typically leave peppermint out unless it's necessary or we need, need it. Just because peppermint is cooling, and since it's already cold outside, it's winter time, I didn't want to add anything extra that's going to be like cooling to her udder um, for right now. But this is just about melted. We just have a few left. But these ingredients I use too, like in um a chapstick or lip balm type deal. We're gonna uh, be making some soon, hopefully for uh, for the channel. We'll make a do a recipe and make some chapstick. I had to go out and buy some chapstick recently, and I was like, why am I? What I spent on buying two tubes of natural chapstick, I could have bought the ingredients in the tubes to make like 12 of my own, but you know, I didn't. I needed it like right then, so I'm gonna go ahead and get uh, on Amazon. I can order the chapstick tubes and do that. 
very soon. That's a lot hotter than I thought it would be. <laughs> Actually, I thought it would be hot, but I thought, I'll try. You can put that there. So I'm going to pull this off the heat. This bowl just fits this pot. So I'm having a hard time doing that. Y'all can laugh at me. It's okay. I know you want to. I'm laughing at myself. And if I drop this and spill this, I'm going to be really sad about it. Here we go. Ooh, I probably have it up a little higher than it needed to be. Got it. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to let this cool in it because, again, especially with the essential oils, you don't want to put them in while it's hot because if you put it in while it's hot, um, you, know, you lose a lot of the medicine properties. So I'm just going to kind of let it cool. As a typical rule of thumb, you know, anything that's over 110, 115 degrees is going to start cooking something. So, um, you try to keep, you know, like if you're making bread or anything, you just want to keep it, the temperatures down so you don't kill your yeast. And same with anything that has those types of properties. You just don't want to do anything that's going to kill the good stuff in it. Oh yeah, that's cool enough. All right. And then the other thing is you still want to work with this while it's warm and liquid because it does have the beeswax, so it's going to set up pretty quickly once you get going. Um, so I'm just going to do uh, 15 drops of tea tree. In an ideal, well, that was 16. In an ideal world, I would know where my droppers are. I would have plenty of droppers, so I could just fill a dropper full and then drop them. But I don't know where any are, or I might not even have any right now. Everything is still packed up in boxes. So, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, three, fifteen. Everything is pretty much packed up, so I don't know where stuff is. Um, but it's a good thing these are pretty quick oils. If you have something like Mara that takes forever, you're like standing here for five minutes, one drop at a time. <laughs> and then I'm going to do the protect, protective blend, and I'm only going to do um, ten drops of this because there's so many different oils in it already. That was about ten. I think I got a double drop in there. So. All right. This way. And so we have our canning funnel. Come on. Oh, there it is. Just to be on the same side so we don't lose any of this because this is good stuff. And then we need a lid for it. You would think I would have been prepared to have this stuff ready to go beforehand, but you know. Oh, there we go. This is the lid I wanted anyway. I like these metal solid lids, and we get um, occasionally buy apple butter that's made locally, and they have these great lids. So I've always hung on these lids over the years as we bought it just to have them because they're really great. You don't have to deal with the ring and the lid. Whoops. Okay. And I'm just going to pour it in, and it about fills up this little jar. That's a terrible sound, y'all. I'm sorry. Spoon scraping stainless steel. And you can see, it's already starting to solidify. If you can see in there, that, because of the wax, it hit this cold stainless funnel. And, uh, it's solidifying. So, there was a little chunk of wax in this jar, but that's not a big deal. It'll melt or it'll be there and it's not going to hurt anything. But you can see this jar is a funny little jar. It's a full cup at the top here. Um, the cup mark is up here. So it's just, there's two thirds there. So it's a pretty good amount. And it should last a while. You don't need much. Um, just a little scoop out with your fingers and rub it on. And anyway, that's our handy dandy homemade utter balm or hand cream whatever you want it to be but it's perfect for the utter balm it works great 
Uh, again, I will link it in the description because I have the, re the exact recipe on my blog. And um, I hope you'll try it. And if you try it out, leave a comment and let me know how you like it.